My name is Kerry Wickstrom. We're a diversified dryland cropping operation out here in northwest Morgan County. We raise wheat, millet, and corn, and most of our farming acres are in a wheat millet fallow rotation or a wheat corn fallow rotation. And we basically farm the arable areas and graze the areas that aren't, aren't as well suited for farming. Sawflies have been with us, uh, I'm not sure how many years, probably on some level 15, 10 to 15 years. Uh, the last four or five have been uh, s significant damage to our wheat production. Uh, for our operation, it's been getting worse. We've, we've got areas that the populations haven't built up that high, but the last couple of years, we're, we're seeing sawfly damage across our entire operation. I'm Jim Mertens. Uh, we farm northeastern Colorado between uh, Fort Collins and Sterling. The little town of New Raymer is our main headquarters. Farm with my son and my wife and his wife, and uh, we raise wheat, corn, millet, and background and feed some cattle. Oh, it's probably been 12 or 14 years since it first showed up on, on our farm. The first couple years we weren't, I'm not sure we knew what it was. We thought it was hessian fly or something like that, but it's just progressed and kept getting worse and worse. We know that the pest has been affecting wheat in the north central counties, uh, areas around Orchard and New Raymer since 2012, but last year um, it really ex expanded uh, in intensity in some farther south areas uh, in Washington County by towns like Anton and Woodrow and around uh, the Roggen area, for example. The wheat stem sawfly produces one generation per year. Adults emerge in late May or early June and are generally active when winds are calm and field temperatures are above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The adult wheat stem sawfly is about three quarters of an inch long with smoky brown wings, with a shiny black body and three yellow bands around the abdomen. The sawfly lands on the wheat plant, lays its egg in the wheat plant, then the larva will bore its way down through the stem until it reaches the bottom of the plant. And at that point, it will chew a circle around the inside of the stem. And below that circle, it will form its overwintering chamber. Above that chamber, it has weakened the stem so much that it's quite prone to falling over, particularly if there are high winds. And so the damage from the sawfly is partly the damage inflicted while it chews downwards through the stem, and also having the stems lodge and become unavailable for harvest. Today, where we're at is a, a field out in Morgan County. This is a, a wheat field that was planted in fall of 2018 and was harvested summer of 2019. And uh, right now what we have is the stubble here that has been cut by the wheat stem sawfly. And what you can see here, if you pull back the chaff, um, is trying to find that wheat stubble that has been cut by the wheat stem sawfly. And if you pull up these plugs or these wheat stems from the crown and split it open, many times you can find the wheat stem sawfly larva that has begun to create its overwintering home. There's a larva right there, right above the crown, at the base of the crown, and this stubble right above the crown. And what this larva will do is develop into a fly in the spring, and when the temperature's right in April, May, uh, it will emerge and begin to fly. And what we have over here is the new crop planted fall of 2019 and that wheat stem sawfly will fly over and begin to lay their eggs in this new stand of wheat. Okay so this is a this is a wheat stem that uh, has been cut by the wheat stem sawfly and even though we're looking at this wheat here it's not cut very bad you can look down in there and you can see some stems that are that are lying flat or they're just knocked over and if you could just grab some of these, they just come right up. They should not do that. 
So you pull them up and you can see that the sawfly has cut the stem and, uh, and has kind of sealed it off. And uh, so the larvae of the uh, wheat stem sawfly are down below there at that point. So this is where the wheat stem sawfly has cut the stem. The larvae would have, uh, the, the wheat stem sawfly females would have laid the eggs into the stem further up the stem. And then the wheat stem sawfly larvae then, after the eggs hatch, the larvae would burrow down into the stem and ultimately cut that stem off. And uh, so that, that activity of the wheat stem sawfly larvae burrowing down in the stem will reduce yield. You know, the literature says 20%, but as I was mentioning earlier, some producers will say it's even 50%. So, so that's, the one, that's one problem. But then the other problem is when the wheat is lodged like this, when the wheat is cut and lying flat, it's harder for the farmer to pick it up with their harvesting equipment, with their combine. And, um, and so there are harvest losses with regards to that. And then also the crop residue. Um, in, this, in this particular area here, farmers, most of the farmers, a lot of them would be planting wheat in like a three year rotation where they would have wheat and then corn or sunflowers or maybe some grain sorghum, some other kind of a summer crop. And then they would have maybe a fallow period or even another crop after that. So what we're hearing from producers is that that corn crop that's following the wheat, where the wheat has been severely affected by the wheat stem sawfly, the corn yields are also very low because there's less a lesser amount of crop residue to catch the snow during the winter time. Since the discovery of wheat stem sawfly in Colorado wheat in the new Raymer area in 2012, the CSU Wheat Program, the Colorado Wheat Industry, CSU Extension, and others have responded with a variety of research and education activities focused on providing Colorado wheat producers with cost-effective and environmentally sound management approaches to this new and significant problem. These include the development of resistant varieties, tracking softfly expansion, cultural controls such as trap crops, and biological control. This is an experiment uh, studying the idea of a trap crop to control the wheat stem sawfly. And the idea behind trap crops is that you plant a more attractive and usually less valuable crop around the edges of a more valuable crop. And in this case, we are looking at triticale, forage triticale, as the trap crop. Triticale is on the right, and we're trying to protect the winter wheat on the left. And the uh, triticale, in this case, is attractive for two reasons. One is simply location. It's on the edge of the field, and sawflies come in from the edge, and so they usually tend to stack up in the edge of whatever's planted there but in this case, triticale. And the second part of the attractiveness is that when sawflies are looking for places to lay their eggs, they prefer thicker stems. And triticale has much thicker stems than winter wheat. So that's it's a sort of a double attraction for them. And just to show you uh, the difference in stem diameter, the uh, Triticale stems are those closer to me, and then the wheat stems are the ones further away in my hand. And you can see that in this case, triticale stems are probably twice the diameter of the wheat stems. So they will be, if given a choice, the sawflies will always select these thicker triticale stems. And so our hope is that uh, after the sawflies have finished flying and all of the eggs have been laid, then we can come in and, and harvest the triticale as a forage crop and leave the wheat to mature and produce grain. So since 2012, uh, every year the wheat stem sawfly, uh, its range here in Colorado in terms of where it's causing damage to the wheat is expanding, one, and then number two, the severity of the damage is expanding it's, and it's getting worse. We're standing here near New Raymer, Colorado, and this is, this is, I guess I've called it the epicenter of the wheat stem sawfly damage in Colorado, but we have other epicenters now 
in Colorado. So, so this is a, a really important problem and we're working on it really hard using a lot of uh, different tools that we have available to us in wheat breeding. And I also want to give a shout out to the, to the wheat industry here in Colorado through the Colorado Wheat Administrative Committee and the Colorado Wheat Research Foundation that provides support to our program to do this work. And uh, without that support, we would not have made the progress that we've been able to make thus far. So through the development of solid stem wheat varieties and the work on trap crops done by Frank Pierce at CSU, or the surveys he's conducted, there's really a success story in this wheat stem sawfly problem that has brought us to this point where we have a variety like Fortify SF that has the ability to potentially help with this problem just shortly after the problem really became a big issue. We're very excited and optimistic about our new variety Fortify SF that brings three quarters bird uh, parentage and then a solidness variety or a solid stem variety from Montana uh, to de help defend against that wheat stem soft light. With that bird pedigree, we get yield performance proven in the, in the performance of bird here in the state over the past few years. Uh, we have a good maturity for Colorado environment. And then also we have that solidness to help defend against that wheat stem soft light. It's going to cut wheat acres back a lot because a lot of people, unless we can come up with a good solid stem or something, it's, uh, it's going to become nearly impossible to grow wheat the way it is. CSU is on the brink. We're going to be planting some foundation seed this fall that is a semi-solid. So far looks pretty good in their trials. I mean, I appreciate Dr. Scott Haley and his program wor working so diligently on this problem. and. Um, I'm optimistic that some of the varieties that we got going forward are going to be a good tool to help combat this thing. You can find answers about the wheat stem sawfly on CSU's Wheat Breeding and Genetics Program website. Look for the links page and click on the wheat stem sawfly Q&A.